Aiden, good morning. Um, what's the plan? How do you beat Essendon? Um, yeah, good question. Uh, we've got a team meeting today, so I'm hoping we find out some more info there. Um, but I think largely what we've been doing over the last couple of weeks has proved um, that it's working. We've, we've had a few wins, so um, we're focusing on yeah, bringing our best, best football and playing our brand. And, and that starts with our, our little circle fundamentals and our contest work being really strong. And then hopefully once we yeah, win the ball, we can break to the outside and use our numbers and, and connect with our forwards. So, um, yeah, we'll sort of hone in on how we can find opportunities with Essendon, but um, largely we're just going to focus on what we do really well because it's been working. Looks like Alex Pierce has been named. That'd be pretty helpful, I imagine, in taming a two-metre Peter. Yeah, yeah, it should be. He's um, he's a great asset to the team, and um, yeah, he's got a, a big task this week up uh, this weekend again against um, Peter Wright. He's been in some really good form, so um, Alex will be up to the task, and um, yeah, he'll be ready for it. Statistically, I think you're the second best defence in the league at the moment. Um, do you think that? fairly represents where you guys are at? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, I think one thing that we've noticed over this pre-season and early in the season is, is the depth um, in our defence. Um, and I think that's been evident that um, we've had a p few players come in and out, like in particular on the weekend. Griffin Lowe came into the side. Um, yeah, and he didn't didn't miss a beat. He was, he was unreal. So um, I think that's one thing that's held us in really good stead is that We've had really good availability and, and when players come into the side, they're, they're able to perform really well. So it's been good. Thanks, mate. That's it from me. Hayden, Lockie Schultz out. How much of a concern is it having COVID, I guess, amongst the group? Have you been watching what's been unfolding with the Eagles? Um, yeah, it's it's always sort of um, front of mind, but we're wearing masks all the time. and and taking the necessary precautions. Uh, it's unfortunate that um, we've missed a few players earlier in the year, but I think it's a credit to the club um, and all the players and staff that we've been able to keep the cases really low and, and not let it spread throughout the team. Um, so yeah, unfortunately we're missing uh, Shooter this weekend, but um, yeah, we're lucky that it, it, is only, it is only Shooter and it hasn't spread throughout the group. So it's something that we're just gonna have to keep working on throughout the year. It's, it's not going away, and um, yeah, at the moment we we feel like we're handling it really well. We just got to keep um, keep keep being vigilant, uh, and um, yeah, try to keep it out. Do you think you guys, I guess, are sort of the sneaking under the radar a little bit? You you know you're doing really well, but there's still you know think people think you know think you need to prove yourself more. But do you think you guys are a dark horse of the competition at this point? Um, oh, I wouldn't say a dark horse. We we have a lot of belief in our ability, and we think um, it can stack up against the best teams. Um, so yeah, we're just eager to to keep putting our best performances out there, and hopefully keep putting the wins on the board. Because um, yeah, there's definitely a strong belief within the playing group, um, and I'm sure I'm sure the um, the broader community will soon see that. But um, yeah, as long as we've got belief within ourselves, we feel like we can um, yeah challenge the best teams. Thanks, Hayden. Good luck. Thank you. Hey, Ethan Leach, all here. Uh, you've personally started really well this season. It must be nice to continually play after two injury-interrupted seasons. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, definitely. It's been good to, to have a smooth pre-season and start the season reasonably well. Um, yeah, it's been frustrating the last two years not to have a clean run at it. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping this year I, I get a lot of opportunity and I can and play some football. So yeah, I'm, I'm looking to keep building on my performances and, and stay on the park. Do you have any aspirations to play in the midfield or are you happy playing half back? Um, at the moment, um, I'm solely focused on playing in the back line. Um, it's, I feel it's my best position at the moment, but I'm always um, looking to the future and looking at ways to improve my game. So um, yeah, I'm always trying to develop craft so that it, um, if I am to change position in the future, um, I'm ready for it, but at the moment, my, my focus is definitely in the back line. Uh, one more question. Uh, Will Brewer has been a fantastic addition to the midfield. How has he settled in at the club? Yeah, he settled in really well. Um, yeah, as soon as he arrived in pre-season, um, he sort of fit in really well with the group and he trained really hard. And I think we've seen earlier in the year that he's, he's playing some really good footy. So um, it's a credit to him for 
for getting over here, working hard and um, yeah, earning his spot. So he's done really well. Thanks so much for your time and good luck this weekend. Thank you. Hayden, Paddy Sweeney here. Um, you've obviously struggled to beat uh, Essendon at Marvel Stadium. I think it's 2010, the last time you, you won there. But what makes Essendon such a, I guess, a dangerous prospect? Because their best is really good, but sometimes they leak a lot of goals as well. But what do you need to do to actually limit Essendon on Sunday? Uh, yeah, you're right. That when they are up and going, they can be quite dangerous. And um, we think that's just they play with a lot of speed and excitement. Um, and when they have a lot of momentum, they can be pretty tough to stop. So that's one thing that we're probably going to um, be conscious of here into the game. That we'll try defend strongly and try take their speed out of the game. And hopefully we can control control the pace of the game. And, and that way we feel like we might be able to nullify their momentum swings and hopefully um, maintain the scoreboard dominance and in terms of the midfield you've obviously been missing david Mundy, nat fife sean darcy Caleb's are on the stages this year now you're getting sort of players coming back each and every week in the midfield you feel as though there's significant upside there in the center yeah definitely um, i think our midfield once again is another position on the field where we show we show great great depth and um, the boys that have played there throughout the year Having missed some of our stronger players or leaders um, have shown that we, we're good enough and we've got a strong strong depth in our list. So, um, yeah, it's obviously great to have um, some of our leaders back in the side and they're going to bring bring their strengths on the weekend and we're really looking forward to that. In terms of uh, Alex Pearce, I know he's sort of been battling that ankle issue for a couple of weeks. If he doesn't get up, who who does go to Peter Wright? Is it Griffin Logue or do you see Brennan Cox go there? I'm actually not sure, to be honest. Um, that's probably one for the backline coach. Um, all I know is that it won't be me. So, um, yeah, it'll be one of our tolls, um, but whoever it is, um, they'll be ready for the role. And in terms of the last fortnight, obviously Jamie's been taking the senior coaching reins. Um, how's it been sort of transitioning back and having J-Lo back in the fold, I guess, after two weeks out and, and obviously back to the same voice again? Yeah, it's been good. Um, obviously, Jamie did a great job when j was absent. Um, yeah, he stood into the role really well and everyone sort of adjusted around him. Um, we had to sort of, a few people had to swap seats, but it was a really seamless transition. Uh, and likewise, having JL back now, it just sort of, um, yeah, it feels back to normal and we're ready to go. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Cheers. Uh, Hayden, you, you're forming a really nice partnership down in defence with Heath Chapman. Um, what have you found sort of, I guess, getting to spend a bit of time together back there after you both had injury interrupted pre-seasons -se um, last year? Um, yeah, it's really exciting. Um, uh, me and Chappie are actually housemates, so we, we have a really good relationship off the field. So um, to be honest, it's just been enjoyable to be, to be back out on the field with him. Um, last year, we, we spent a fair bit of time in rehab together. so. Um, me and Chappie are just enjoying our time on the field um, and I think that's reflected in, in our performances. We're just having a lot of fun. And you obviously had um, a small sort of um, surgery during the pre-season. What's it been like for you sort of overcoming that um, and being able to build a bit of continua... Con I'm losing my words. It's 8 a.m. in the morning. The continuity on field um, for yourself and a um, bit of confidence as well in that back half. Um, yeah, it's been it's been pretty pretty good to be honest. Um, it was luckily that procedure was early in pre-season, so um, I was still able to get a large a large chunk of uh, pre-season training. I didn't miss any any match simulations, so. Uh, my body, I've got a lot of confidence in my body, um, and yeah, um, so far I'm feeling really good, and there's no issues from that from that little operation. And just with the COVID stuff again, um, I'm, I'm assuming there's obviously measures in place to try and avoid it, like you said, within the club and externally. Is it sort of sustainable for players, do you think, um, to sort of keep doing everything in your power to avoid it after two seasons already sort of in bubbles? Um, yeah, I think it definitely is. Uh, well, I feel like we've been a little bit different to most of the competition in the last two years where COVID has only sort of just arrived in Perth. So for the last two years, we've actually been um, been able to move throughout the community and live a pretty normal life without having to worry about it. So in terms of, um, yeah, that sort of COVID fatigue you might be talking about, it's, it's something that we haven't probably had to deal with as much as the Melbourne clubs and, and the Eastern States. So... Um, yeah, we're certainly talking about these sort of things about COVID fatigue and the protocols and how it can be sort of frustrating. But 
um, we've got a greater purpose in mind and, and, and that's that's playing football in September. So um, that sort of drives us to to follow the protocols and, and do whatever we can to sort of keep people out in the park. And just lastly on Andrew Brayshaw, um, he's obviously copped a bit of attention in the midfield the past two weeks. Has it been sort of, um, I guess, quickly jumped on by everyone else in the team? Because we saw at stages last year, he might not have gotten the protection he needs, but that seems to have completely been acknowledged this year by his teammates. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. It's something that we, um, we've we spoken about heading into games um, and something that we're all aware of. And, and something that if we see it on ground, we want to try to help him out where possible and try, um, yeah, lose that tag. So um, he's done really well over the last couple of weeks to, to still have a lot of impact on the game. And, and one thing that's really been noticeable is that he's been playing a really selfless role for the team. Um, he's been trying to take other players out of the game so that our mids can have space and time to get their hands on the ball. So um, if, if it isn't for his sacrifice, um, our other mids can't get their hands on the ball and we can't get the ball moving forward. So um, his performances over the last few weeks have been unreal.